hey, what's up? Made these and I thought they were cool. So I wanted to show you how you can make these two, uh, these cool things. All right, so we're gonna make three materials, the potion, the glass, and the cork. Here's what the nodes for the potion are gonna look like. Here's the glass nodes, and here's the cork. Just kidding, I wouldn't do that to you. This is the actual cork. By the way, if you like what I do, you can support me on Gumroad or on Patreon. I've got stuff on there in exchange for your support. Existing patrons, uh, thank you very much for your support. You guys rock. Okay, in my first version of this bottle, I went with kind of a different style and I just did it freehand. This time I'm going to use a reference image, so I'm going to bring in this picture of an interesting French wine bottle. And while I'm struggling through the modeling process, how about I tell you a nice wine joke? So I was at the liquor store the other day buying a bottle of wine, and as I was leaving I suddenly remembered, oh crap, I rode my bike here. I started to get worried, you know, what if I wipe out on the way home and break this nice bottle of wine I just spent my money on. So after thinking about it for a minute, I decided, I'm just going to drink the bottle before I ride home. And it's a good thing I did. I fell like 12 times. Okay, you can see I added an HDRI for lighting. I'm just finishing up the modeling. Originally, I kept the liquid and the bottle as one object, but later on, I split them up. I don't think it really matters what you choose to do. The reason I split them up is because I wanted different modifiers on each one. Okay, I'm just going to split my screen here by grabbing the top left, dragging it over, and changing this left side to the shader editor and hit N to get rid of that shelf on the uh, right there. And I'm just going to put the default material on my bottle there, just for now, as a starting point. I'm going to go to the Materials tab here. I'm just going to add a second material to this object as well, because I have my liquid on the same uh, object there. And so let's just call this top one glass, and oh, did it in the wrong spot. Glass, and uh, let's call this second one something different. I'm going to go ahead and hit this button here because I accidentally made those two the same material. So this makes it a unique material with the same starting point. And we'll call this potion or liquid, whatever you feel like. I'm gonna grab the cork up here and let's use that same starting point as the glass again. We'll just put that on the cork and hit this button right here. It's gonna make a new material with the same starting point. We'll call this cork. So let's start with the glass texture. I'll click back on the bottle just make sure your glass material is selected there um, on this side. And it should say glass at the top there as well. So uh, what you could do is really just increase this transmission to one and then bring the roughness down. And it's actually, you know, looking pretty good already. It looks like glass. I'm going to do something slightly different where I'm going to feed something into the roughness to affect roughness variation kind of in different areas there. And that's going to be a noise texture. So I'll just go ahead and place that here. We'll come out of the factor and we'll go into the color ramp. And I'm going to feed this into the roughness like this here. So if we look at this, now it's going to have variable roughness depending on which uh, you know shade of gray is going into that area. If it's darker, it's going to be less rough. It's going to be smoother because that value is lower. And if it's uh, closer to white, it's going to be closer to one so it's going to be much more rough. So you get something that looks kind of like this. At this point, it's stretched vertically because by default, uh, if you don't have anything attached to this noise texture to tell it how to tile, it's going to be coming out of the uh, generated output here. I did that shortcut by, you know, while this was highlighted, I hit Control-T, by the way, which is a Node Wrangler shortcut. So if that's not working, you just need to go to Edit Preferences, uh, Add-ons, type in Node up here, and just make sure there's a check mark here. So yeah, anyways, the control T shortcut brings up this mapping and texture coordinate node, really fast way to do it. And I'm going to change it from the generated output to the object output, and that's going to fix that stretching. Then I'm going to come to this color ramp and change this black value to 0.245. And this white, I'm going to bring all the way up to one. If you look, you can kind of see the potion in the bottle already. That's kind of cool. It looks like it's using the same material as my glass though. So uh, let's go ahead and change that. I'm just gonna tab it to, well, let's go into solid mode. Tab it to edit mode and just hide all this exterior stuff. And we'll just grab all this here. Just assign that uh, potion material to that inner part there. Okay, let's start working on our potion here. I'm gonna search for a Voronoi texture. Just bring that in, hit control T to bring up the texture coordinate and mapping node, and just make sure object output is going into that mapping node. And let's look at the distance output. 
I'm going to bring in a noise texture as well and just place it right here and put a mix RGB right afterwards. So it's plugged into color one and I'm going to plug the vector from the mapping into color two. I'm going to adjust the scale on this Voronoi and change it to 1.2 so it's a larger pattern. It's even a little harder to see right now so I'm going to bring in a color ramp. Place it right here and I'm, I'm just going to change the position of the black flag to 0.614 and I'll leave the white as is. And this is going to go into the emission, uh, the emission strength rather. So let's take a look at that principal BSDF there and I'm going to change the base color to hex code B, B3E778, so kind of a greenish color there. Um, you know, here it is on the color wheel. And I'm going to change this emission to a similar color. Uh, we'll go BBE773. And this is going to be, you know, it's kind of a similar color here, but um, I guess I just tried to make it, make it more saturated and a slightly different color as well, just to have some variation there. And then I'm going to change the roughness to 0.2. I guess I already did. I just changed it off camera there. So there we go. We've got our emission coming in here and the strength is controlled by this color ramp here. So the closer to white it is, the stronger it is. And you could even go uh, with a math note right here if you wanted to amplify that effect, change it to multiply. You could crank this up as well if you wanted more glowing bits. But I'm going to leave that off for now. I'm going to change this mix RGB to 0.6 for the factor so there's a little bit less influence from this noise texture. And I'm going to change this Voronoi from 3D to 4D. It's going to allow me to change this W uh, right here, which is what I ended up animating. And to animate it too, I'm going to use a driver, uh, just a really simple one here. If you go into the input field here, you can just go hashtag frame, and then you can go divided by whatever number you want to play. Uh, you know, basically how many numbers you want to go by every frame. So if you're like one, or I guess if you're just like frame, you know, uh, this W is going to change by one every frame. So if you go frame divided by 10, uh, this is going to change by one tenth every frame. So I'm going to go frame divided by 100. So it's going to change by one one hundredth of a frame. So it's a little bit slower than if we changed it to a, a lower number there. And if we just hit space, you can see this animation Play. I guess it's a little tricky with uh, this graininess, but you can still see the colors changing there. Small correction on this uh, potion with the base color here, the hex code. Instead of B3E778, that should be 8-3E778. Just uh, enter that in. And that's the color I actually meant it to be. You can see the uh, difference is a little bit more stark, and I like the glowing effect a little bit better from these two colors. Let's do this cork here, and you really don't have to do uh, very much here. I may have overdone it, but whatever. I'm just going to bring in a Voronoi texture here, and um, let's go ahead and hit Control-T, bring up the texture coordinate and mapping. I'm going to plug the object output into the mapping node, and let's put a noise texture right after the mapping node, and a mix RGB as well. And we'll just plug the vector from the mapping node into color two there. So now it's a controller for how much influence this noise texture has here. Uh, I'm going to change it to 0.9 on the mix RGB and just leave the noise texture as is. Zoom in on this cork here and let's take a look at the Voronoi output there. I'm going to change the scale to something larger so that we get uh, you know smaller pattern. 33 is probably going to be pretty good there. And let's feed that into a color ramp. And I'll place it right here. Let's move this over a little bit. And um, for this color ramp here, I'm going to change it to be the, the first flag is going to be at 0 0.082, and the second flag is going to be at 0.645. For the first flag, I'm going to change to color hex code 4C463B. So it's kind of a uh, dark gray color there with a little bit of brown. And then second flag, let's change it to hex code 664E3A. So this is a little bit lighter, um, you know, kind of a, you know, medium brown, I guess. I'm also going to duplicate this color ramp and place it up here. Uh, change a couple things. This second flag, I'm going to put it at 0 0.605. And I'm going to add one more flag in the middle here. I'm going to place this at 0.345. I guess that's, is that where it was? Uh, pretty much, 0.345. 
Uh, and then let's go ahead and change the hex code to B4A16F. There we go. So kind of a lighter color there. And uh, for this one here, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the factor going into the mix here. And this color output from this noise texture is actually going to go into this uh, color ramp right here. And I'll do one more color ramp in between here, too. So let's just kind of see what this is doing. This is going to tighten up uh, the separation between those colors. And I can just leave this as is. So I'm going to change the black to 0.3. And the white is going to go to 0.836, something like that there. I'm going to add one more color ramp in here and just feed the distance output from the Voronoi into that guy. The black flag is going to stay at the bottom and the white flag, white flag is going to come down to 0.227. I'm going to feed this into a bump map, bump node. And uh, this is going to go into the normal, not into the base color. Just make sure this color ramp is going into the height uh, rather than the um, normal here. So now we've got our bump map there. We could, you know, lessen this a little bit, maybe like 0.5 or something like that. Uh, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to do one last thing too with mixing these guys together. In fact, I can just use this shortcut, which is uh, Control Shift, right click and drag from one node to the other. It creates this mix RGB with a 0.5 mix, which is actually what I'm going to use which is just uh, something that looks like this here. Let's plug that into base color. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just going to scale this a little bit. I'm going to go to the mapping node at the very beginning, and I'm going to change all three of these scale numbers to three. Uh, maybe two would also work. I'm going to go with three. It looks a little bit better. And let's go ahead and lessen the height, uh, or pardon me, the strength on this bump map. Maybe to 0.5 or something similar, maybe even a little less. Maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I like 0.3. That looks pretty good. And maybe what we could do is um, put a little bit more influence from this noise in here as well. Maybe like 0.8. That's something to play around with anyways. You could always adjust this to and then scale this back. That is going to affect the other texture up here as well. So just be aware of that. Maybe let's go back to 0.5 and we'll go 0.85 for now. That's fine. One thing I forgot to do that liquid actually is just change the transmission on the principal VSDF to one. Then it actually looks a little bit more clear, uh, less opaque, less milky. Okay, that's it for today. If there's anything that you're confused about, feel free and let me know in the comments. I'll do what I can to clear up any confusion you have. Thanks for watching.